So far, 10 teams have qualified for their chance to design a spaceship for Star Citizen. And now, the judges must make their final selections, and the race for the wild card is on. Welcome to the next great starship. Hi, I'm Sandy Gardner, and welcome to the third episode of the next great starship. Let's get this show started. I can't do this alone. I need the judges. So, Mark, come on up. Bam. All right, Sean. <laughs> Chris. Which <Two> one? Chris's. <laughs> <laughs> Three Stooges over there. All right, there. Mark Skelton, Sean Tracy, Chris Roberts, Chris Smith, and Chris Olivia. For those of you who are new viewers to the next great starship, let's have the judges tell you what they do on Star Citizen. Mark Skelton. Art director, uh, fashion guru. <laughs> I work for CryTech, CryEngine Evangelist, uh, making sure engine does uh, what Chris Roberts needs it to do. Chris Roberts, project director and uh, chief creative on the project. Uh, Chris Smith, I'm the lead vehicle modeler. And I'm Chris Livia, chief visual officer for Star Citizen. So they're going to make their final five selection today. What do you guys think of the competition so far? We've had two episodes of pretty amazing stuff that, you know, pretty much all of it we liked. Uh, we had a few criticisms, but uh, the level of competition is really high, and I would expect this episode to be the same. And then once we've got it done, we're looking forward, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing the ships get made. And the only so reason we have criticisms is because we have to have criticisms to, like, That's move right. yeah, other people really on. Nice, <laughs> we're nice guys most yeah. of the time. Most of the time. We try. I mean, honestly, we try. Honestly, with like any of these teams where we're at right now, with the level that they're at, I mean, with the little art direction on our part, mm -hmm. I think we, we could. A little, a little bit of you, you mean? Is that what you mean? A little bit of Mark. A little bit of gold yeah. shirt. Well, I know if you guys don't hire some of these guys, I will. So, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm ready to like hire some of them and replace a few of the guys we have. <laughs> oh. Damn. For competition entry, teams were asked to design a gun. You guys know the drill. We're going to look at eight teams. Only five will go through. Three go into the wild card race. Should we get this started? Let's yep. do it. All right. Let's go. Good day, ladies and gents of the Starship Council. We are Team Mark. May I introduce to you my esteemed colleague, Matt Kent, team lead responsible for 3D modeling, unwrapping, and the cry engine integration. And may I introduce to you Lewis Linehan, texture and concept artist extraordinaire. And if you haven't guessed it by now, we are Great British. Currently residing in the great city of London. So where better to design the next great starship? Mark Skelton, what did you think? The gun itself, the design, um, I think it's a little Klingon to me. It, there's a lot of like big bulky shapes to it. They're all stacked kind of on top of each other. A lot of angles think, going in a diff different yeah, direction. Yeah, and it kind of, it doesn't flow very well, the gun from, from beginning to end. The silhouette is too chunky for me and there's too sure. many things stacked. Totally agree with you on that one. Most of the stuff is all stacked up together. You got a lot of repeating elements all the way through it. Uh, the end engine stuff is actually really nice, though. So, uh, it, it was is. good that they got it right in. The materials look great. The textures look okay. That, that's probably the best in the engine integration yeah. of all the ones we it's saw. Because mm -hmm. they hooked it up into the firing range that we'd set up in the, the hangar. And I kind of like the multi-barrel aspect where they would all recoil separately, so that was cool. I sort of felt like the shapes, for me, it was all a bit sort of... Um, you know, right angle, square. I mean, I don't feel like the gun itself had as much detail as I would have liked to see in parts of it. Great implementation. Uh, the modeling seems okay, and the textures, I mean, 
But yeah, it's the design that kind of holds it back, I think. Yeah, overall it had an interesting sort of style, but it, it lacked uh, yeah. a lot of subtlety. There's too much contrast between the materials and it's just sort of uh, very harsh to look at. So. Yeah. You want to draw your eye to that glow, but you know, if you're going to put it in these strange places, it's just of course you're going to look at it and be like, why? Right, you know, so a lot of times the there. glow will just like distract you and it's just yeah, overdone. Yeah, totally, so <coughs> some pur purposeful I mean, like detail maybe. Shit. Like Mark, yeah, it's glowing. Like the shirt, yeah, exactly. Going to dry your yeah, eye your eye goes it's so subtle <laughs> to the chest, to the chest hair. Hair. <laughs> And that's the other point too. For uh, as the competition goes on, I mean, the engine really looks a lot better when you put some lights in. That's the thing. It needs the light material interaction. Difference. It's yes. gonna change the look of the weapon altogether. Even if you don't adjust them, get three lights around the thing, it'll look fantastic. So. Yeah. Okay. So good points for being an engine, and maybe needs a little bit of love in the design and texturing. All right. Let's look at the next one. Hello, my name is Adam Kirchgesner. And my name is Brian Kirchgesner. And together we make Persimium Productions located here in Amarillo, Texas. Our Windfire EX design consists of two particle accelerators, as well as a large cooling system, dual magnetic retaining arms, and dual perpendicular rotating barrels. Chris Couch, Chris Olivia, what'd you think? I like the, the start of the presentation to where they're, they're doing the turntable in, a, in an x-ray mode, you know, to, to really see like all the geometry and stuff. But um, I was a little underwhelmed overall. I thought it was actually kind of interesting, the design, um, definitely unique. I would say, you know, the modeling was fine. Uh, the texturing could definitely use some work and the front barrels probably like could use a little bit more love in the design area. I mean, I think isn't wasn't the idea that the outside things are just sort of accelerating stuff yeah. from inside? Like, right. With the animation inside, like two yeah, rotating, it sort of felt I, it like was just something hard to was, see. That's all. Like it, it felt like something see. was like they had these particle stuff. effects well, it looks, that was all refracted, and I can't. It read looks it. a little bit like a wood chipper. Yeah, oh, <laughs> right. you know, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing, you know. And now that you say that, now I can't. It, it seemed like that. the barrels were a little bit just too the thin. Guides. They look like yeah. matchsticks. Yeah. sticks. Right, right. Like two matchsticks on each side. Yeah, well, you I know, think the, the idea is they're not actually. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not they're just like a magnet yeah. and that's, that's accelerating something inside. And that was what I. The one thing that I would comment about, I like the uniqueness of it. Uh, it's pretty cool. They kind of thought about it a little bit differently, and I like the acceleration aspect of it. But. To me, it maybe feels more like a maybe a tractor beam or something. It doesn't feel like a like a badass weapon, right? <laughs> it doesn't feel like you don't really the like the business end of it isn't intimidating at all. The in-engine stuff uh, was okay. I mean, they could have spent maybe another few like an hour, maybe just you know putting some textures down so it's not all maybe completely some placeholder. Sorry? Maybe some lights. Maybe a few <laughs> lights. It would look a lot better. Yeah, definitely. Definitely stands out in the competition in terms of its uniqueness, I would say. Let's roll the next one. Hey, everyone. This is Team Four Horsemen. Four Horsemen is Tobias, myself, and David. Tobias is our concept artist. He lives in Germany. I, myself, am a 3D artist and texture artist, and I live in the Netherlands. David is our general artist who lives in Canada. Sure. There was no in-engine implementation, so, you know, a little bit. I would have liked to see that. <laughs> strike. Yeah, right, strike. That would have been nice to see, absolutely, because actually the texture work is phenomenal. The materials looked great in the render that they had. I like the shape of the weapon. Um, it's really bulky. It looks like it's a very strong um, sort of weapon, but it does also look like something you would hold on to rather than something getting mounted on a ship. So if you're going to try and get that into engine, how long do you think it would take you? 
Take me? Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. <laughs> All right. Just, yeah. No way. No, I think it'd that's probably take challenge. about an hour. So it really depends. Uh, really depends on the geometry and how how well the textures were laid out. For some reason, this guy. I love it. It's cool. I like the the bigness of it. I like the concept. The concept was amazing. Concept I mean, great. Yeah, blew me away. Oh, yeah. yeah. The concept. Nice yeah. color. Nice variation throughout the gun. For some reason, I don't know why, but it reminds me of um, steampunk. For some mm. reason, there's like a steampunk element. It, it doesn't look far future. Uh, it looks like it could conceivably happen today. You could have a gun like that. Mm. I think the, you're right, the materials, I think, probably could have been broke up better. If they break up the materials, I think that gun, like, goes up three notches well, for me. Yeah, I mean, I thought the concept was really well done. Yeah. And I wish they kind of would have implemented that in the model a little bit better. It was modeled fine, but the materials, uh, they kind of came off as like a weird gold. It looked very heavy yeah. and uh, powerful. It more. seemed to have lost something from the con. I mean, the concept almost looked more realistic than mm -hmm. when it was modeled. And, and I think the materials and the concept was like, wow, that's like a really interesting use of uh, uh, the different metals and stuff. And it just sort of lost that. And I think overall, it, it didn't have much of a, an alien influence at all. That's yeah. I, Disagree with you a little bit in that I don't think you can hold something like that. That I think it would yeah. right, but it's got these big heavy. racks on the top where it's like. Right. I mean, I could probably hold it, but walk you know. them around. <laughs> no, I'm not good. <laughs> I do agree with Chris that the like there's no sort of sense of an alien influence or design. It feels very sort of straight, straight up sort of badass space marine to me, yeah. um, and so. I would kind of knock it down a little bit for that, but I do think the like sort of the modeling and the concept of execution was, well, like, well, was, was really good. And you know, it would have been interesting to see how they thought that gun would deploy, how it would fire, what the recoil would be, um, because you know, I know that wasn't necessary for everyone that that wasn't required, but it definitely helps tell the story right. of the gun, right? Sure. So sell it. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it makes it feel real, right? Because well, like when it animates and moves, it sort of it gives you a sense of the weight and the power of something. Yeah. So a big part of um, like this competition is selling it through animation and, and how it moves and lighting, right? Yeah. yeah. All you judges seem to like the concept art, um, design, maybe a little more love in a couple of areas. Um, questionable as it's not in game. Um, although it only takes five minutes, according to Sean Tracy. Apparently. Oh, for well, sure, Tracy. Right. That's not a normal or, person. Or Dan right? Tracy, I'm my, not a normal my brother. Person, yeah. <laughs> so we'll just have to see on that one. Let's roll the next one. Hi. My name is Henry Pashko. I am a Johnson and a environment designer for game. Hello, my name is Daniel Winograd, and I am working with Stranic and Kajasi on the next great Starship project. I am 21 years old, and I live in Harwood, New Jersey. Hi, my name is Alexander Aberly. I come from Battleground, Washington. I have brought my skills in computer animation and film production to bear on this product, and what we have created has been phenomenal. Daniel is a uh, cryengine god. I saw that. Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Sean's gonna have something to say about that. Well, <laughs> we'll see. The owners of Crytek would have <laughs> something to say Crytek about that. I would say. <laughs> the problem with this gun for me is a, it looks like um, Flash Gordon, like from like the 1960s or something. There's no real breakup. There's no details. Um, the, the way that the barrel um, has those notches the in them all the way down, I mean, that again, that's frequency, like we had talked about before. Uh, if you have something high frequency like that, um, your eye immediately goes straight to it, and it, it just blows the design. When so. you have like high frequency things like that, you got to be careful um, with, with, with lighting and texturing and stuff, because that's where it'll, it'll ruin it. But yeah. I mean, it, you can do that if it's executed well. So I thought actually the gun uh, design-wise had a lot of promise. Um, I liked a lot of elements about it, but I think uh, the materials and the texturing were lacking quite a bit. It was all this sort of consistent uh, gloss and there was not a lot of work in the little details, maybe making a little bit beat up and looking. I think that could have helped the gun a lot. I mean, he had this sort of you know, chrome texture, and it's sort of very basic looking to me. It's very sort of elementary that when you just pop a chrome 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, it felt like it was, yeah, you were just sort exactly. of putting a default material, a yeah. texture on And I, I think a lot of these things in general, it's like, yes, they're okay, brand new right out of the, the manufacturer, but you, you need to get in there and, and break up the materials with, with um, a little bit more occlusion in the crevices and even some like scratches and dirt. Right. And, and really needs make to it, be yeah. a subtle amount. Yeah. Just, just a subtle amount. Give it some character, that's right. the thing. Give it some identity. Like, right. yeah, it's not an iPhone. Otherwise it just not it goes a, cartoony. You know, the in-engine stuff, that was actually pretty cool. Uh, what they managed to do there, you know, they got the gun firing up at the ship. Maybe he's so. a minor cri-engine deity. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> so he seemed to be able to implement Sub, it pretty well. So. And I bet yeah. you it takes him five So a demigod prop. Demigod. <laughs> yeah, crunchy yeah. demigod. Yeah, right. right. So just We've knocked him down in a hair. Engine. I well, think it had a nice yeah. mix of alien and, and human. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I actually, did, I, like the I, shapes. I actually yeah. didn't mind the shape and design. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the same frequency issue that Mark did. Mm -hmm. So it was more about the materials, the texturing, and then just some of the details of like how it would fire and where it was coming right. from. It could have been, like Chris says, it could have been good promise. and interesting, but it's sort of like <clears throat> it was halfway done. All right, let's see who's next. Hi, my name is Simon Ma. I am a designer and modeler at Sakura Sun Corporation in charge of their weapon technology for particle cannons. Hey, I'm Gage Hallman. I handle rigging and animation for this project. Hi, I'm Dale Kovetsky, modeler monkey number two. I handle extra modeling on this assignment. I go first on this I saw one. A lot of I freaking love this yeah. one. This one's <laughs> I awesome. I, I mean, because all the presentation was in engine, because that's where it matters. That's where the player is going to see it. Like all this stuff outside of the engine doesn't matter until it's there. Um, the animation's fantastic. The the particle effect that they did in engine is also very cool. They had this really nice ramp up of color, so it went you know from like a dark blue all the way to the orange where it was firing away. Uh, the animation of the overheat, that's also very nice with little effects coming off that. Yeah, all the details were taken into account here. Very, very impressive. I thought the details in the animation of the weapon was really good. The implementation in the engine was really good. Um, and I like the design of the weapon. Um, I would critique sort of the texturing because it was kind of low res. That's mm, when you what got I was up there. They so, got way yeah. too close to it. Yeah, yeah, I don't, don't know get why. that I mean, close. I don't, you know, you, they could up res that and it wouldn't oh, have that. They were trying to make it sort of a bit sort of weathered and, and, yeah, and right. used, but. It was just yeah, too low res. Chris, what are you thinking? Overall, I love this gun. Um, it's a great design. And I do like uh, the coloration of it and everything. And um, the texturing uh, was good. But yeah, the, the low res thing, um, the close up, the pits were too yep. deep. Yeah, and it yeah, made it look porous map, almost and a little like weak. And I think that kind of, you know, the pits being so deep, it makes it look and see more low res than it might be, the texture. Yeah. They could have just pulled the camera back a foot. I like it when there's a lot of sort of layers and depth uh, to the, the engineering of it, and it, it felt um, like it, I always like when things feel cohesive and like it's, it's, it's part little of one cooling machine. thing. Yeah. Kind of. So I know, I agree with everybody. It was very impressive. Well, I think it's a great design. It's very anime-ish, which is cool. I mean, I, I like, like that. that though. I like that because it's like, it, it, again, it introduces um, alien elements, uh, which I, you know, it yeah, feels I mean, And feels I can like see, I mean, it's Sakura Sun, right? So it's a yeah. sort of kind of Japanese-ish yeah. company. Right. So, you Perfect. know, the yeah. slightly anime feel actually yeah. would feel right. It's nicely. I was like very impressed by the commitment to also keeping in shape while they're <laughs> yeah. in front of a keyboard. <laughs> yeah. So we should true. actually have some dumbbells here while we're sitting. Right. <laughs> For me, so far, this is the best gun today. These are the best guns today. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Look at that. No, you got no. programmer guns, great. man. Programmer guns. Not man, those no small guns. Yeah. yeah, we got a couple of pop guns over there. <laughs> <laughs> All Let's roll the next one. Hi, my name is Jan Mischke. I'm living in Yokohama in Japan. One of my hobbies computer games and uh, computer graphics. I was really eager to join this contest for Star Citizen because it's a 
big motivation to develop your skills. So have a look. I simulated two different firing modes for this cannon. The sequential firing mode and the parallel firing. Over here. Yeah, well, no, that's pretty impressive. It, for me, it, read, it, it re reads as a gun that I could believe that would be on the ships. Um, I thought it was modeled well. I thought it was textured well. Um, I probably could have seen a bit. I, we didn't really see any animation in terms of like the gun recoiling or anything like that. I mean, I liked the particle effects. I thought that was good. Thought it looked good in the engine. So uh, no, generally, I was. Uh, I thought that was a, a, a really nice entry and impressive that it was just one person doing it. It had a little bit of a, a Star Wars feel to it Big with time. the paint job. That's probably why I liked it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rebel wow. Alliance. Yeah, just a safe. Rebel Alliance color scheme uh, there. But yeah, it was it was good design. Um, I agree with you. Uh, maybe you could use some more animations. Uh, yeah. The texturing was good. And uh, I did like uh, the, the paint scheme overall and everything. Uh, it did seem a little bit maybe even all across. But I think actually the gun would fit well with a lot of our ships. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was a very uh, elegant design. It, w it wasn't overly complicated. And even though the silhouette was um, somewhat basic, it, was, it had a nice clean um, feel to it. It had just, I think, the right amount of detail. So I was really impressed. Yeah, it feels like this could be like a robot arm, which is cool. Robotech. I like that. It's, it's got a very Robotech. smooth design yeah. to it. Yeah. Like Chris was mentioning, the silhouette, I mean, there's not a whole lot of things like sticking out of it. It's a very uh, stylish, smooth gun. It's more like a, you know, it's less like a tank, more like a Ferrari. It's a simple silhouette, sure, but what's cool about it is that the, the, the texturing, the normal maps, everything uh, really uh, goes with the flow of the model anyway. So there's a lot of stuff for your eye to dance on. Comments. The particle effects were really cool, actually. That, uh, those are not uh, super easy to do, so that was pretty impressive. Um, when he's showing it an engine, it would be nice to have some context to the size. That's the only thing, because that thing could be as big of a, you know, as a Star Destroyer, or it could be a really tiny little thing. So having something else in the scene would really, really help. But uh, yeah, you know, it's a small comment. I think the, the particle effects sort of help sell um, the alien hybrid feel to it, because sure. as just by itself, it's, it's like very human. It's cool yeah. energy, yeah. sort of. So. Yeah, no, I just really like that sort of, whatever it was, the second one where it was the... the like a tail coming in. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was sort of, of, I don't know, kind of... Tenderly. Like, tenderly, yeah. yeah. So how would that sound? If you were energy to tendril. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not making any sound effects in the game. <laughs> Judges are impressed with this one. So let's have a look at the next one. My name is Brian Cousins. I'm doing special effects art, technical art, programming, and scripting for the team. I am from Cedar City, Utah. Hello, everyone. My name is Sergio Stojkovic. I'm from Romania, and I'm a 2D and 3D artist of this team. Hi, I am Eric. I'm one of the artists of the team. I'm from the small town of Lugun in the Philippines. I, I love the serrated sort of feel of uh, the, the thing on the bottom. The lighting and the presentation was like a little bit flat and overlit, so that could have been better. So I thought the gun was good, actually. Uh, there were some parts I liked a little bit less, and I, I really liked the back end of it, the design and everything. It flowed really well. Uh, the front <laughs> railing thing, I'm not in love with as much what? as you are. Uh, it reminds me a bit of a swordfish. Fight! Swordfish. <laughs> But it, it looked like it had a purpose, you know, uh -huh. the way it yeah. was doing something. Yeah, the animations were great. Uh, the materials could use a little bit more work that, I mean, I, I, I like the carbon fiber kind of thing, but it was maybe a little bit too shiny and a little bit too simplistic looking in places. But uh, overall, I like the design of this gun. I am not in love with the serrated edge. I think if the frequency was 
a little different. Maybe at the end of it, instead of having them all exactly the same, maybe the the one tooth at the end so maybe was up, thicker. One. Yeah, yeah, it was like maybe thicker or mm -hmm. uh, changed up a little bit. I think yeah. that might have that probably help help it. Right. Yeah. I I really liked it. I mean, I do agree with Chris that maybe a bit better lighting when they were showing it off in engine would have helped out. Uh, but I like the design. I sort of felt like the gun itself had a purpose. You could understand where it fired. I mean, I like after it finished firing, it expelled like energy or heat mm, out that of that. Was cool. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's sort of, you know, you really got a sense of like the functionality of the gun. Talk about a team from all around the world. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you got one in, together, in Romania, actually. one in Philippines, one over they all in Utah. all had cool, lovely uh, facial hair. And they, yeah. Well, they, they went on that one too. That's but yeah, no, it's good. It's impressive. I mean, it's just a, it's another example of like how much talent we've got entering this competition. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's cool. Be a hard one. Last video, guys. Let's roll it. We do it. Hi, my name is Philip Erkinger, and I'm the leader of our small modding team. In the team, I also take the role as the main 3D model. Model. Hello, my name is Hannah Erkinger. In the team, I have the role of the illustrator, texturing artist and for concept art. Hi, my name is Philipp Sackl. I'm still in my 20s. My job in the team is technical designer and also with implementation into the CryEngine. The smooth and elegant design integrates the Xi'an tech into the main body of the weapon. In front, the ion source as well as the collider are aligned which together with the Xi'an matter injector create a perfectly tuned wave to neutralize shields. And finally, this is the integrated and textured weapon in the CryEngine SDK. We hope you enjoyed our presentation and thanks for watching. This is one of those ones that it, it, uh, I was really getting into it, the explaining of the technology and everything, and it was like, oh wow, this is, this is looking cool. And then the final sort of implementation, it was like, oh, it, it just fell really yeah. short for me. So. I think it works on every level except for um, the texturing, which is sort yeah. of the, the material yeah. texturing is sort of like it's all gray. <laughs> right. But like if you look at how it's designed and built and how it yeah. deploys and how yeah. it fires and how it animates, it's like it cool. that's probably the best design, most, uh, you know, the most thought's gone thought. into it. And yeah, all yeah, the guns yeah, yeah. Thought see. through, yeah. Um, but the texturing side is just kind of gray and it doesn't really have any detail. And then also it doesn't allow those really wonderful parts of the gun that have been designed yeah. to stand out. I mean, if, you, um, if they pulled like a panel off, you could see all the cool things that were Yeah, it's almost kind of like you sort of designed this really wonderful thing and then you'd like, up. yeah, turn the lights off. Yeah, so it, was, yeah. it was hard to tell. It was animating while it was going. Uh, the front barrel animation is really cool, I thought, the way it shuts and opens. But it was, yeah, the texturing kind of <clears> hindered <throat> that because all that black, uh, that same kind of hue. Uh, if you got up close to it, it looked like there was some wear and tear, and it looked it looked kind of cool. But again, I think some better lighting probably would have helped that out too. There was no silhouette to it, really. I mean, it doesn't read from afar at all. It looks like a toothpick. Um, now the animation is really cool. I like it, but again, if you're going <coughs> to have something that crazy animated, then it needs to be exaggerated. I think like. Instead of popping out like an inch, like it did, maybe it would be better if it popped out, yeah. you know, bigger. But you know I mean, I, mean? I don't, I don't more... really agree with you that I think the silhouette's a toothpick. I mean, if you go back and look at it, I don't. I actually think if you look at that, um, yeah. it, it is not a toothpick. Changes. It's it actually got like some interest and it's got some detail. There's nothing mm -hmm. like. There's no like the other the previous ones we've seen. There's been like gas canisters or something that has broke the I, shape I, I, from afar. I, no, you've definitely got stuff like towards the back and the stuff where it. It absolutely, it's not just a straight but See, I think that's where the failure of sh showing it off in yeah. the engine is just, it, you're, you're losing <clears throat> but it. But the stuff that they used for it, in my opinion, was um, too subtle of a change in silhouette for it to read anywhere but right up on it. You I know mean, what I mean? Especially as a weapon on a ship as yeah. well. Or, yeah, I mean, yeah, there was some variations, like minor variations in the silhouette, but... Again, I'm if I if the if it was across the room and I'm looking at it, it would just read as and the texture didn't help it. You know, it would just read as a big black cylinder. I think he's responding to the in-engine piece where you see it spitting in off at a distance, back. 
and you see yeah. that, and that's kind of all you see is the barrel start. I mean, well, it's because it's all spinning, like the right. front part and the back part. So it's all it's all that one piece is what it looked like. I mean, maybe they, I mean, I don't know. It could be cool looking on a ship and seeing it, you know, seeing the back part rotating fast like that. Yeah, there was a ton of build up to this one, and I was really into it. The cross section of it, I'm like, this is gonna be you know, freaking awesome, and then. It switches to the end engine, which is completely flat, totally ambient lit. There's not a single direct light inside. It's got a little bit of glow on it, which again pulls your eye away from the actual shape of the weapon. The animation was really cool. I like that uh, when it actually deploys out, rotates around. That's 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 really nice. Um, but the effects were a little underwhelming. Yeah. As a female, I noticed there was a female in the team. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yay. Props to that. We are relatively male dominated at Cloud Imperium, but. I guess you've worked with quite a few illustrators, concept designers who are female in the past, Chris? Oh yeah, absolutely. We, sure. We're, we're completely gender blind. Hmm. Just whoever's the best artist. Yep. Yeah. That's all we care. Okay, judges, so now we have a little surprise for you. Ooh. We had one team who came in just under the wire. So we had to double check that this video came in basically one minute before midnight on New Year's Eve, Los Angeles time. Due to some technical difficulties, we couldn't get it into your selects. So you're going to be seeing this for the first time. If it's in your top five, it goes through. And if it's out, it's out of the competition completely. Ooh, sudden death. Well, it's very much in the spirit of game development. One minute before deadline. Right. Yeah, Let's roll hot. the video. All right. <laughs> Allora, vai. Uh, ciao, sono Alex. Questo è più o meno il posto dove vivo. Diciamo che è una località in mezzo alle montagne, in Italia. Per la precisione è la Val di Susa, in provincia di Torino, in Piemonte. Il mio ruolo nel gruppo è il 3D artist. Tutto quello che riguarda grafica 3D, effetti speciali. Vorrei dare veramente un contributo a tutto questa, questo grande progetto. Quindi ecco perché io ho voluto iniziare questa cosa. Ciao, sono Michele Schillaci e sono il concept designer dei 3 Dingo. Ho 21 anni, vengo da qua, da Bussoleno, in provincia di Torino. Ciao, io sono Enrico Oliva in arte Mastro 1, sono un musicista. Uh, faccio il sound designer nel gruppo dei, dei Trelingo. Sweet. Dude, I would totally party with those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they definitely awesome. have the, most, the glasses are amazing. They have got the most nothing style. but energy. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that was cool. Nothing like us. No, nothing like us. <laughs> so you yeah. liked it, Mark? I thought that was fun. I thought yeah. it was great. Yeah, it was a great video. Uh, I liked their attitude. I liked, uh, I, actually, I actually thought it was quite nice that that was one of the few times that one of the contestants took some of the concept art yes. that we've supplied. And even though we're developing what the genre's going to look like, they were looking at it and right. sort of trying to meld it into their shape. So, that was great. Yeah. So I thought the design looked really interesting to me. I mean, Animation-wise, I think it could have been better and, and maybe there was um, some material and texture stuff that could be, that looked like there was Tightened some sort up. of geometry yeah. issues in there, but it sold like sort of a more alien Jean gun mm. for me. I quite liked it too. Uh, a lot of cool, interesting shapes throughout the gun and uh, the modeling seemed good and uh, the texturing 
looked good. I didn't really like the little glowy bits all over it. It yeah. was a little bit too random. Yeah, random and like maybe misplaced. Uh, maybe fewer of them, a lot fewer glowy, those little glowy squares. But overall, it was Yeah, we haven't really liked nice. the glowy bits, have we? They're, they everyone, can be done. Well, I mean, I like glowy, glowy bits. bits. I think it was one of the closer ones to implementing what the, the, the genre style is with a yeah. know, human look. That was mm. cool, man. They actually took the concept, mm. you know, and was like cutting out shapes on it. Mm. And, you know, that's what we would hope <laughs> you would do, you know, because, I mean, that's, yeah. that's why the concept is there for you to look at and absorb... Um, style cues and information yeah. from it. Sean, let's hear your opinion. The in-engine stuff was, was okay. I, I think the out-of-engine stuff looked a lot nicer, so I think they just need, they probably haven't worked with it before. Um, so it just needs a little bit of tuning, um, and a, I think it'll look fine. One of the non-engine renders that looked really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that really looks really good. And look, that was the nicest of all of it. You can yeah, achieve yeah. that in the engine, it's just... Can you? <coughs> yeah, absolutely Well, I thought you can. five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> well, five minutes. Yeah, well, that one's maybe, maybe a little longer oh. for this one. Um, but I was going to mention the alien stuff again. Um, it's really cool when they start combining this outer cowling and then having the human interior. I think that's a really cool idea, and that's, that's what they did here, and I, I think it really worked. All right, guys, so seeing as this is a special entrant, I think we should just decide right here and now if this team is going to go in. Wow. If this team does go in, then that would leave four places out of eight Ooh. for your other choices. That's a lot of pressure. Ready? It is a lot and of pressure. the other ones go into the wild card, though, right? Yes. So, so yes. They will. Card. They'll be Instead one. of three into the wild card, it'll be four into the There'll wild card. There'll be one card. extra wild card. Okay. And if you don't vote them in, they're out of the competition completely. Harsh. That's well, a real do or die. All right. Right. Are we ready? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mark um, Skelton. I'm going to say yes. I like this. I like these guys. And I think uh, out of the group before, I think this gun is actually better than a couple of the ones previously. So. All right. That's one yes. Sean. I'm going to have to also say yes. The gun uh, looked good in engine. It looked a little bit better outside. But I think the in-engine implementation can get even better. All right. Two votes. Chris Roberts, before you vote, if you do vote for this team <laughs> to go through, then that basically means they're in. And sorry, Chris and Chris, you That's we're fine. out. You're <laughs> yeah, you're out. <laughs> yeah. off the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Chris so is together as one. <laughs> right, right. What are we gonna vote for then? One, oh. two, three. Yes. yes. Oh my God! Oh man! All right. No, I think they should. How go. They had a, they had a, they had a great we head. should have done that. Yeah. yeah. One, <laughs> two, three. Yes. yes. What the hell, man? You guys are the Christmas. That's, weird. That's the problem. Oh, it's like that is right. surely up in well. here. Yeah, it doesn't work as well. So congratulations to Three Dingo. All right, in the competition. Yes, we done. Good for them. Brilliant. And now there are only four that are going to go through. So email me your votes now. Come on, get your phones okay. out. Okay. Here we go. All right, judges, the results are in. I can tell you three teams you voted out unanimously. Dragons of Nirvana, Prosimian Productions, and Archon all received zero votes. However, you all joined the wild card race. Now three teams you voted in unanimously. Shimapan. Yep, I'm good. One Bit Amoeba. Mm -hmm. And Shard Collective. Congratulations to all three of those teams. That leaves us with two teams, Infinite Shoe Monkey and Four Horsemen. One received three votes and the other received two. Are you ready to reveal your vote live? If we must. Let's do it. All right, Chris, you're up. I voted for Four Horsemen. Chris Smith. I voted for Infinite Shoe Monkey. All right, one each, Chris Roberts. I went for Infinite Shoe Monkey because I felt like they did more of everything than Four Horsemen, who just did concept and a model, and that was it. OK, well, if you vote Infinite Shoe Monkey, <laughs> then they're in. Is it you? No, <laughs> I voted for Horsemen, actually, yes. despite uh, myself and Chris's disagreement on right. it. I think we agree that it, uh, it definitely needs to move forward. All right, Mark, it all comes down to you. Who did you vote for? Drum roll. Four Horsemen. Yes. All right, Four Horsemen is in. 
Well, there's no accounting for taste on this. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, Infinite Shoe yeah. Monkey goes into the wild card race. The wild card race is officially open with 10 teams in it. So go vote now. reveal the wild card winner who goes in with the other 15 teams. All right, guys, get excited for next week for the competition? Yeah. That's when it really starts happening. Gloves are coming off. It's going to get ugly. <laughs> yeah, I'm also really interested to see who the community picks. It's going to be nice with when, they, when we get to the ships because it's sort of, there, there's more to gain and more to lose. There's a, a lot to judge mm. when you're going for the full ship. There's going to be a lot more to talk about, I think, and there's mm -hmm. a lot more Yep. There's a lot more to think about uh, uh, for the teams as well as for the judges, so I think it'll be interesting. All right, guys. Next week, 16 teams officially battle it out to win a grand prize of $30,000 and to be the winner of the next great starship. See you next Friday.